All right, YouTube. Uh, lately, I've been getting into uh, Kydex. If anybody you Googled Kydex or seen on YouTube Kydex holsters, you know that it's a uh, heat formable plastic that you can use to make holsters and knife sheaths and pretty much anything you can imagine. Uh, so I made a holster for my Glock 42, or correction, 43, which is on my hip. Uh, and I'll show that here in a little while. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one for a friend of mine, uh, an M&P 22. It's a 22 handgun. Uh, so I'm going to make him a Kydex holster. Uh, some of the prep work I've done is uh, to prevent the plastic from going too far into the trigger well to make it too tight. I've placed this uh, foam. And basically what I got this was is a $5, maybe $4 piece of uh, gardening kneeling foam. And I put the heat gun to it and it took a while before it even started to burn so if you want to look for a cheaper route you can use these uh, foam pads right here for four bucks and they'll take a pretty good amount of heat and we'll show uh, what, what happens here in a little while also this one's got a, uh, a rail system to it so in order to prevent the rails from being too defined which will allow them to grip and have uh, trouble pulling out uh, I put a piece of uh, rail cover over it so that'll leave a little bit of space um, I made a small wooden piece that will fit inside the eject chute or eject port uh, so the Kydex doesn't go too far in there. Once again, that is where one of the major hang-ups is when you're drawing the holster. And for the front sight post, uh, a dowel with some tape. If you look down right there, you'll see that it'll leave a channel. So let's go ahead and uh, heat the Kydex up in the old trusty toaster oven and let's see what we get into now as the uh, kydex gets hot you want to keep especially with these toaster ovens I mean they're great for making pizza rolls but they will heat up a little too fast sometimes for the uh, kydex so you want to be careful as far as the heat goes uh, keep an eye on it make sure when it starts getting rubbery that's when you want to start getting ready to use it. Uh, you make sure you want to use gloves, all right, because this stuff gets pretty hot. Once you get it inside the foam, then you can take your gloves off and start twisting down. The more pressure, the better. You're not really going to crush your gun. Uh, okay, so what I want to keep doing is keep rotating. We can see it's getting nice and soft. We don't want it to get too soft because it gets to a point where it's going to become shiny and then you're going to start burning it. You're going to start losing the, uh, the, the dull finish of the uh, Kydex. Um, if you look on this piece right here, it's got a dull type finish. Uh, on the back, it's shiny. All right? The shiny is the side that you want sliding against your uh, firearm. That helps with the sliding out of the holster. Okay, we are ready to take the uh, first piece out. Looks like it's going to be nice and hot. You want to take that out. You want to place the uh, pistol in the center about where you want it. You're going to take the top part out, turn that off. All right, you're still fairly hot. Okay, we're going to take our clamp. Well, let's go this way. You're going to need some more that way. So let's go ahead and start clamping. Make sure we have it right. Let's go ahead and start running our clamps. And we're going to want to put a lot of pressure. You want to make sure that that doesn't spin. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and use some of these clamps as well. Okay. At this point, you have to start moving a little quick. Okay. Let 
You're going to put a lot of pressure on here. Tighten up these screws on the vices evenly. And for sandwiching the items together. The more pressure, the better the definition of your plastic. Okay, let's go ahead and take this one. stays hot. The worst thing you can hear is a crack. Okay, so now we're going to continue on. I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish adding pressure. We'll be back. Okay, so what we have is our clamps in place right now i'm gonna wait about 15 20 minutes all right yeah there's some better jigs out there but once again you don't want to spend a whole lot of money to make a holster because uh, then you could just go out and buy one so uh what we got is our foam sandwiched this is a more dense foam for the back and a little bit more soft foam for the top for uh, contours so uh you want the most definition you know to make it look you know high speed uh, on the top the back really not so much worried about it okay um, so let's go ahead and let this cool about 10 15 minutes we'll come back and uh, let's see what we uh, were able to accomplish okay YouTube so we're back uh, here's what it, here's the example I took it off my belt holster uh, I mean my belt loop uh, this is the one that I made for my Glock 42 ah, 43 uh, and I made my own belt loops uh, for the thickest belt that I would normally wear on a daily basis. Um, and the 43, you can see, fits right in. Got enough right here to keep it from rubbing against my skin and pants or shirt. Um, it's got pretty good retention. You can see that it's molded in here. And uh, once I was able to heat this up just a little bit to get some of that fine definition out, uh, this is what was hanging uh, most of the uh, retention up. But uh, now I, I wear this one. It is nice. It, it feels really good. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Uh, once again, this is my first one. So hopefully we get better as time goes on. So let's go ahead and see what we get with the results. Okay, this is going to be... This is going to be a surprise to you and me. It's the first time I use this uh, foam. So hopefully... I got my four dollars worth. You know, as you get into these new hobbies, you put money into it here and there, here and there, and you know, five dollars, ten dollars, fifteen dollars, twenty dollars. You know, it starts. You know, the holster that you made trying to save money cost you what you could have paid for a store bought, but you don't get the satisfaction of uh, saying, you know, hey, I made this and this is what I got. Okay. So, here's the big reveal. Please do not stick. Okay, so we got a little sticking so far. Um, okay, so the bottom came out just fine. Uh, the foam did not stick. It just kind of stuck just a little bit. But uh, got some pretty good definition so far. Uh, the rail came out just the way I would hope for. And so it wasn't going to be too aggressive. Um, let's go ahead and peel slowly so we don't do any damage all right so this foam did hold up so if you are looking for a cheap foam uh four bucks big lots um it's held up pretty good supposedly it's got a 500 degree melting point and i think you know you shouldn't be getting over 300 you know degrees for the kydex um, notice that we have no shine okay so that means that we didn't melt it and we have good trigger 
definition. We can see that the rail came out. Um, this portion right here is the uh, spot where the um, sight will go, and uh, we will sand down this portion right here. So let's go ahead and remove this small. So what we got is a uh, defined outline. Let's take off this little rail cover right here. You can see how the rails, they would have been grabbing in like teeth. So we're trying to go for um, an easy holster draw, but have retention. You want to make sure that anything that will snag up on the firearm you know, is not going to get caught up. Uh, I haven't really ventured into flashlights or anything like that. So um, let's go ahead and we'll continue to clean this up and see how it turns out here shortly. But for right now, we've got the makings of a holster. All right, here we go. Ooh, one of my favorite songs is on. Takes you back to the early 90s. But it's not what we're here to talk about right now. Let's go ahead and turn off the iHeartRadio. Okay, so uh, as you've seen the initial mold, uh, I've done some initial shaping on the disc sander uh, to give it uh, the next step, which is uh, the basic holster pattern. Okay, I'm using uh, some T-nuts, what I call them, or T-screws, to uh, hold the piece to align it. Uh, everything's working out pretty good so far. Uh, I don't have a lot of tension on it right now, but the pistol without all the other stuff on there slides in there pretty good. And once I start adding a little bit more tension on these screws right here, you can adjust the tension to what you want. So right here, you can see the definition. We don't have too much in the way of the... Um, Trigger guard, uh, what I might want to do is I'm probably going to heat the back up here a little bit and then press into it. All right, something you won't see, but you press into it, that'll put a little bit more tension on. You don't want to distort the plastic too much. You don't want anything to interfere with the trigger. Um, so you don't want to place your firearm in the holster. Meanwhile, the trigger is being detented, all right? Uh, so you don't, want, uh, you don't want that. Did I use the word detented right? Yeah, detent pressed, pulled, squeezed, whatever, jerked. So you want to have enough space in between there, which will allow the holster to not activate the firearm, okay? So we've got pretty good definition here. We've got plenty of space up here to keep that sight from getting pulled on, add more tension. And uh, we see that we've kind of flush mounted up so it just sticks out just ever so slightly right there. And then we're going to go ahead and, uh, I made these earlier, but I don't think I'm going to use them. They are going to go here. I'm going to go something a little bit thicker. Uh, well, this one right here will probably work just fine for the belt loop that he was talking about that he says. And then I'm going to make another one that is similar to this one right here, where it does a little L shape right here. So, uh, that'll be my next step. Uh, you want to make sure you polish the edges. They do get kind of sharp. So you can use a real fine sandpaper. This is 400. That will polish it up. If you like the real shiny edge, you can probably, you know, use some polishing compounds or something like that. But I like the dulled finish. Uh, it does come out pretty good. So we're looking pretty good right now. All right, something for carry um, on a daily use. So we're going to, and then I'm also going to bend this, kind of contour a little bit so it's not so defined sticking out right there it's going to bend down a little bit so we'll go ahead and do that and keep it rolling okay so as we continue on um, still in the rough stages right now it's the fitting stages um, I made the uh, back straps for the belt and standard one and a quarter inch belt should fit right in there This is pretty stiff. Okay. I fit it just a minute ago. Okay, there we go. This belt is brand new, so it's stiff. It's just when I came with a pair of pants, but that's what I use as a reference. Okay, so what we can see here is... Uh, we have the belt loops. All right, and I think the belt he wears is gonna be thinner, so it's, it's 
not going to be too bad. It should be able to fit just a normal everyday dress belt. Um, what we have here, I'm kind of contemplating whether I want to contour this area down just a little bit. Um, take it down here, maybe take it down here a little bit, but uh, we're going to go see. we got pretty good retention. Okay, the only issue I'm running into is if we notice when you press it back, it pushes the slide. So, looking down, I think I have too much tension right up in here, so I'm going to have to kind of reheat and fix it up. But other than that, this is what we got, and I'll show you the finished product when we come up with it. Okay, so uh, we've done some shaping, we've done some contouring. Uh, pretty much it's about 90% uh, done. All I have to do now is just sand the edges down with some 400 grit. Uh, just to take off that little sharp edge right there, as you could tell right now, I just use a spindle sander uh, to contour this in, just to take a little bit off right there, just to look a little, little too beefy. Um, I contoured the uh, side, as you can see right here, contoured it so it kind of sticks to the body. Uh, I already tried it on myself; it fits pretty good. Um, once again, here's how the belt's gonna assembly's gonna work. Still comes out not too bad. I'm going to add, uh, right in here, I'm going to add a rubber, a uh, couple of rubber uh, O-rings right here to put a little bit of uh, space so you can tighten it and add tension right in here. This is where you're going to be having most of your tension, right at this point. Um, these right here, sturdy, hold it together. So it's looking pretty good and I'm pretty happy with it. So let's hope he likes it too. And... Uh, so here we go, Smith & Wesson MP22. Kydex holster, it's my second one. Slides in and out, not too bad, just gotta clean it up. All right, thanks a lot, enjoy it.